Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and here's all this week's quiz episodes in one go. I love a good quiz, but until this pandemic's over, you're going to have to make do with this. Sorry. First up, five general knowledge questions. Question number one. Which planet officially stopped being a planet in 2006? So which planet isn't a planet anymore? And it stopped being a planet in 2006. Hmm. Question two. Which movie has the tagline, the longer you wait, the harder it gets? And the clue is, mm, it's a pretty good joke. The longer you wait, the harder it gets. Which movie's tagline? Question three was sent in by uh, Paul Morley, who is uh, a viewer of the little tiny quiz of the lockdown, and he sent in a question, so thanks very much. And here is the question. Where was the last concert Queen played with Freddie Mercury? So where was the last place Queen played a concert before they became a sort of Queen tribute band? Huh. Question four. The lyrics to a UK number one single of 1967 and the lyrics to a UK number one single of 1975 both contain the word Fandango. Name them both. So two songs, one from 67, one from 75, both number ones, both contain the word Fandango. Name them both. Also, name any other songs with the word Fandango in them. I'd just like to know. And question five. This sounds complicated, but it's very gettable. We all know what speed means. We all know that acceleration means how quickly speed is increased. Some of you might know that jerk is how quickly acceleration is increasing. And the word for how quickly jerk is increasing is snap. If you continue in this pattern, what are the next two terms? You're gonna kick yourself if you don't get this. Next, I'm gonna describe the title sequence of some well-known TV shows. You just have to say the name of the program every time. So question number six. Some protection from water becomes necessary when an ornamental water feature is used inappropriately. We've all seen the show, what's it called? Question seven. A suited man is in his office. Oh no, he's falling down into the city below. Wait a minute, no he isn't. He's in a nice chair with a cigarette. What's the show? Question eight. We get a very brief glimpse of the skyline of the largest city in the Pacific Northwest with a tiny variation each time. What is the TV show? Question nine. It's time for everyone to go home in a town which has apparently had a jaundice outbreak. What's the TV show? And question 10. Public transportation ironically causes a wardrobe malfunction. What's the TV show? Well, that's it for today's questions. I'll be back with the answers in, I mean, right now. So pause if you don't want the answers yet. First, we had five general knowledge questions. Question number one was about the planet which got demoted to dwarf planet in 2006. It was poor old Pluto. Not entirely sure you can say dwarf planet anymore. Never mind. For question two, I asked you which movie has the tagline, the longer you wait, the harder it gets. It was, of course, the 40-year-old virgin. Good gag. Question three, where was the last concert Queen played with Freddie Mercury? Now, I thought Wembley, 86, but in fact, the answer is Nebworth Park, a little later, the same year. So Nebworth Park was the, uh, was the place we were looking for. For question four, I asked you to give me those two songs with Fandango in the lyrics. We were looking for A Whiter Shade of Pale and Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, it all connects somehow. And question five was our fun physics one. Uh, the sequence goes speed, acceleration, jerk, snap, and after snap, crackle and pop. Yeah, that's right. So snap, crackle and pop are proper grown-up terms in physics. Who knew? Next, I described some opening sequences from TV shows. Did you get the TV shows? So question six was some protection from water becomes necessary when an ornamental water feature is used inappropriately. The water feature in question was a fountain. The protection was umbrellas. The show was Friends. For question seven, the description was this. A suited man is in his office. Oh no, he's falling down into the city below. Wait a minute, no he isn't. He's in a nice chair with a cigarette. It is of course, Mad Men. Question eight was this. We get a very brief glimpse of the skyline of the largest city in the Pacific Northwest with a tiny variation each time. The city was Seattle, so the show is Fraser. For question nine, the description went, 
it's time for everyone to go home in a town which has apparently had a jaundice outbreak. So jaundice uh, is the clue there, it makes everyone go yellow. The show is The Simpsons. And finally, question 10 was public transportation ironically causes a wardrobe malfunction. It's a bus which ironically has Carrie Bradshaw's face on it just as it splashes her from a big old puddle. Sex and the city. First up, five general knowledge questions. Question one, which of the Spice Girls was born first? Which of the Spice Girls was born first? I suppose you could say which of the Spice Girls is oldest, but I view them as being timeless, so that would be unfair. Which of the Spice Girls was born first? Question two, in sport, what does WWE stand for? I mean, what do the letters WWE stand for? Not what are the core values of WWE? Our question three, we have a question from an isolator, John Davies. Thank you very much, John. Here is the question. If your balls are black and blue and mine are red and yellow, what are we doing? If your balls are black and blue and mine are red and yellow, what are we doing? Quite philosophical, that one. Question four, and it's another one from you lot, sat at home. This is from uh, Graham Tanner in London. Complete this quote from Boris Johnson from the end of the 2008 Olympic Games. I say this respectfully to our Chinese hosts who have excelled so magnificently at ping pong. Ping pong was invented on the dining tables of England in the 19th century and it was called what? So what did Boris Johnson say table tennis used to be called? And question five. Question five is often the one where you have to make some sort of educated guess. No exception today. In 1957, one of the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous annoyed some AA members when he suggested that what could be a good way to get off the booze? So what did one of the founders of AA say might be a good way to get off the booze? Okay, next five questions have a sort of a topical air. Question six, which celebrity has released a video of themselves taking delivery of a load of meat? Not like that, get your minds out of the gutter. And giving up a macrobiotic diet for lockdown, but promising to stick to humane meats. Who would do such a thing? Well, that's the question. Question seven, the Queen recently celebrated her 94th birthday. I didn't get her anything, Christ. Uh, what part of the traditional celebrations did Buckingham Palace decide would not be appropriate at this time? So, what did the Queen forego on her 94th birthday? I mean, we've all made sacrifices, but really, oh, this was quite a big one. Question eight, which celebrity is responsible for kicking off the TikTok trend, the dance called the Toozy Slide? I think it's the Toozy Slide, but I mean, I, I don't know because I'm not one of the kids, but the, the Toozy Slide, which celebrity is responsible? It's not a bluff. I genuinely, I, I genuinely don't know how it's pronounced, the to, to, Toosie slide. It's a singer there, you can have that. Question nine, in Cornwall, and that's a clue, a man called Tim Fugg has become a dad again. Congratulations, Tim. The new baby weighed a little over six pounds and Tim created something of the same size and weight to honor the new arrival. Uh, what was that something? And the clue is Cornwall. And question 10, Leonardo DiCaprio is offering a walk-on role in his forthcoming movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, to someone who donates to a charity to help feed vulnerable people in America. What a nice bloke. Who is the director of Killers of the Flower Moon? So who's the director of Killers of the Flower Moon? It's someone he's worked with before and someone who's great. Bit of a clue. Well, hopefully you got all of those. I mean, you were lucky. You got a chance to have an education. I read that two out of three kids aren't doing any schoolwork at home, which they think is nearly half. Right, time for some answers for today's questions. Pause, obviously, if you haven't got all the answers yet and you need more time because, you know, it's not an exam. Have as much time as you like. Really, we've got nothing but time. Okay, answers. Question one, I asked you which of the Spice Girls was born first. I didn't want to use the, the word oldest. But uh, now I have. Oops. Anyway, it's, it's Jerry Halliwell, and I'll tell you what, she looks bloody great on it, whatever age she happens to be. For question two, I asked you what WWE stands for. It's World Wrestling Entertainment. Right. Uh, it's undoubtedly very popular. In fact, it was even deemed an essential service in Florida for a bit. Uh, weird to have entertainment in the name of your sport because it makes it sound uh, more like a spectacle and less of a serious sport. But, uh, well, 
Let's leave those questions to someone else. Question three. If your balls are black and blue and mine are red and yellow, what are we doing? Or rather playing? The answer is, of course, we are playing croquet. Yeah. Obviously, we wouldn't be playing croquet because that is some non-essential activity at the best of times. For question four, remember what Boris Johnson claimed was the original name of table tennis. It was Wiff Waff. He thought it was called Wiff Waff originally. Turned out, bullshit. Yes, not, not quite true. Who'd have thought it? Boris Johnson getting his facts wrong. Mm. And question five was the one about the founder of the AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, and it was LSD that he thought might help folks give up the source. Just to be 100% clear, if you are trying to cut down on the vino in the lockdown, I don't especially recommend getting off your face on acid. Although, you know, go with God, I won't judge you. Next, I gave you some topical questions. Question six, uh, the celeb who took delivery of uh, that meat is of course Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. I imagine she's currently doing a roaring trade in vagina scented candles. Good luck to her as well. Question seven was all about the Queen's birthday. Well, our Queen decided to forego a 94 gun salute. Normally it takes place in Hyde Park and the Tower of London on her birthday, but she decided it was not an essential activity in the middle of a pandemic. God bless your mum. For question eight, I asked you who has created the Toozy Slide, uh, the dance that's become a trend on TikTok. I don't know what any of these words mean. I mean, TikTok, I'm on, but, but Toozy Slide? Good luck, it was Drake. Of course it was Drake uh, from Toronto. Uh, and uh, yeah, a fun fact, he started at the bottom and now he's here. Hmm. For question nine, the clue was in where Tim Fugg lives. I told you he was from Cornwall and uh, the thing he made, the same size and weight as his newborn son, was a Cornish pasty. It was half a meter in diameter and it took him two days to eat the pasty, not the child, let's be clear. Finally, question 10 was the Leonardo DiCaprio one. If you donate to the All In Challenge, then you'll be entered into a prize draw to win a role in a movie directed by none other than Martin Scorsese. Oh. Question one. Well, in lockdown, it has been uh, mandatory to watch Tiger King, so uh, I thought we'd do a tiger-related question. If a daddy tiger and a mummy lion love each other very much and they have a baby, the creature is known as a tigon. What is it called when a daddy lion and a mummy tiger have a baby? So it's when a daddy lion and a mummy tiger have a baby, what's it called? Question two, the original version of which song begins with a singer saying, goodbye Norma Jean? Question three, this is from an isolator. Fiona's question is, who killed the man who killed John F. Kennedy? Yeah, who killed the man who killed John F. Kennedy? I mean, I say killed, allegedly killed. I mean, he definitely did, but you know, if you wanna be a conspiracy theorist and burn down a mast, allegedly killed. Question four, Mount Rushmore features the likenesses of four American presidents. Two of them are Washington and Lincoln. Who are the other two? So I'll give you Washington and Lincoln, who were the other two presidents on Mount Rushmore. And question five. Question five is the one where you often have to make an informed guess. I think you can get there. Um, there's a somber note to this question, but we live in somber times. In January 1867, 41 people were killed in Regent's Park in London whilst undertaking what sporting activity? And really the time of year is the clue. Next, I'm going to give you chapter headings from DVDs of well-known movies. All I want to know is the name of the movie. Let's do this. Question six, which movie has these chapter headings? Knock on Wood, Mighty Marcia Yaz, and Is Reno Trustworthy? It's a classic movie. What's it called? Question seven, the chapter headings are Dog Tags, Omaha Beach, and One Decent Thing. It's a big movie, this one. What's its name? Question eight, which movie has these chapter headings? Star Child, The Dawn of Man, Emergency Airlock. Actually, I bet the director wouldn't call it a movie. He'd call it a piece of cinema. Yeah. Anyway, what is the name of the classic film? Question nine, the chapter headings are Lands of Death, Bleed With Me, and Courage and a Free Heart. What is the film? I mean, it's rousing stuff. 
And question 10, you should definitely get this one if you've been locked in the house for five weeks. The plaster cocoon, meet the neighbors, and message to a murderer. What's the movie? Okay, if you're writing down your answers, it's time to wrap things up because here come the answers. I'm not saying the quiz today has been a walk in the park, but if the police catch you doing it, they will fine you 30 pounds. Question one. What is it called when a daddy lion and a mummy tiger love each other very much and they have a little baby? Uh, the answer is a liger. Yeah, I presume we're all experts because we've all watched Tiger King. Let's face it, it was amazing. For question two, I asked you the original version of which song begins with a singer saying goodbye Norma Jean. Norma Jean, better known as Marilyn Monroe. The song is of course Candle in the Wind by the great Elton John. Question three was, who killed the man who killed JFK? Did you get this? It was Jack Ruby. Yeah, allegedly. I mean, you know. He did it. Question four was the Mount Rushmore one. I gave you Washington and Lincoln. Uh, I wanted you to give me Jefferson and Roosevelt. That's at the time of recording, by the way. Any day now, I'm sure Trump will sign an executive order and have himself added. Question five. Uh, the clue was in the date. It was January 1867 and um, hundreds of people were killed in Regent's Park whilst ice skating. Yeah, stay away from lakes, people. Stay safe, wash your hands. Next, I gave you those uh, triplets of chapter headings from DVDs. I asked you what the film was. Well, here they come. Question six, uh, Renault there is Captain Renault and the marvelous uh, Marza Yaz and Knock On Wood are two of the songs they sing at Rick's Cafe. It is, of course, Casablanca. If you've not seen it, you know you've got time on your hands. Have a watch, it's a classic. For question seven, one clue was that Omaha Beach was one of the D-Day landings. Uh, so along with dog tags and one decent thing, we were looking for Saving Private Ryan. You've got that, of course you did. Question eight was Star Child, The Dawn of Man, an emergency airlock. Uh, they're all chapters in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Well done if you got that one. I didn't really get it. I mean, in that I didn't really understand what was going on, but I liked it. Looks stunning. For question nine, I asked you which movie has uh, scenes titled Lands of Death, Bleed With Me, uh, and Courage and a Free Heart. We didn't give you The Trouble With Scotland or Freedom because that would have insulted your intelligence. It was, of course, Braveheart. Finally, question 10 was The Plaster Cocoon, Meet the Neighbours, and Message to a Murderer. It's a film about being stuck inside all day, peeking out and being a bit nosy about your neighbours. Yeah, I'd recommend it. It's called Rear Window. Question one, which movie had the tagline, he may be dead, but he's the life of the party? It's a classic of a sort. Question two, which religious song has been a hit for Norman Greenbaum, Doctor and the Medics, and Gareth Gates with the Kumars? Something for each generation to grab onto there. What song was a hit for all of them? Right, time for a question from one of you. Today it's from uh, Alexis Bowden and it's a corker. Before the philosopher Jeremy Bentham died in 1832, he asked that his body be preserved at University College London. But why? Was it A, so he could come back and tell his colleagues whether God existed, B, to keep his dog, who was also stuffed, company, or C, so that he could still go to college parties? So why did Jeremy Bentham get himself stuffed and, and, and kept at the university? Question number four. Now, I don't know anything about football, but I got this eventually. This was from one of our viewers, Adam Richardson. I can't thank you enough. It's a corker of a question. The last time Pele was seen playing in an international football match, who was in goal? Yeah, as I say, don't really follow football. I did get it, but only after thinking for quite a bit. So when Pele last played in an international football match, who was in goal? Question five. One clever habit that gulls have is of standing on the grass and tapping the ground with their beaks. Why do they do it? Simple. Why do gulls tap the ground with their beaks? Next, I'm going to show you some images, uh, say them out loud, and you'll be saying something that sounds like the name of a well-known book. You get the idea. Question six, three images, say them out loud, and you're saying the name of a great American novel. Which one? Question seven. Three picks, say what you see. Question eight. 
What are we looking at here? Question nine, another book title, which you get by saying out loud what you're looking at. You get the idea of this. A more recent book this time. And question 10, this one isn't a sound alike like the others. You just need to think about what you're looking at. Satisfying when you get it. Okay, that's it for questions. Answers up next. It looks like soon we're all gonna have to wear masks in the street because apparently coronavirus can't infect you if it doesn't know who you are. Question one, he may be dead, but he's the life of the party is of course the tagline for Weekend at Bernie's, uh, which is probably not one to watch during a pandemic. I don't know. Question two, Norman Greenbaum, Doctor in the Medics and Gareth Gates and the Kumars all had a hit with Spirit in the Sky. Yeah, transgenerational. Question three was the one about Jeremy Bentham and the answer is C, that he wanted to still attend college parties. What a guy. For question four, we had a little head scratcher from Adam Richardson. Well, I can tell you that Pele retired early in 1977, but then he was next seen playing in an Allies versus Germans match in the film Escape to Victory. And in goal, Sylvester Stallone. And question five was about gulls. Well, the reason they, they stand on the grass and tap it is to trick worms into thinking it's raining. And then, and then when the worms go up to have a little drink, the, uh, the gulls eat them. Charming. I mean, it's literally called worm charming. And it's charming if you like gulls. If you like worms, it's a nightmare scenario. Next, I gave you those books in picture form. Let's have them. Question six was the great Mo Farah, a lovely bee, and the timeless Dick Van Dyke, Moby Dick. For question seven, uh, what can we see here? That person's mad, there's an amp, and a lovely ovary. Whack them together, you got mad, amp, ovary. Madame Bovary. Question eight, we were looking for a fella called Frank, a hen, and a German tankard, so that's Frankenstein. Frankenstein. For question nine, uh, we've got some wool, and then fall, so that's Hilary Mantle's wolf hall. Wall fall, wall fall. Yeah, you can live without the F, you'd be fine. Finally, question 10 had a group of lions. That's a pride. And the other image certainly shows some prejudice. So yeah, it's the original chick lit page turner, pride and prejudice. You know, Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice has an income of 10,000 pounds from his you know, assets and businesses. In modern money, that would be 12 million pounds a year. Yeah, he was quite a catch, turns out. Up first, five general knowledge questions. Question one. What's the longest single by the Beatles? I'm talking about duration. I realized they were all seven inches. Well, what was the longest single by the Beatles? Question two. We all know where SpongeBob SquarePants lives, under the sea. But how does he earn a living down there? Question three. Here's a lovely viewer question. Now, when I say that, do I mean a lovely question from a viewer or a question from a lovely viewer? Well, we're about to find out. This one is from Craig Aston, who it seems is in Spain, and it goes like this. What was special about the date, the 20th of February this year? What was special about the 20th of February this year? Pen and paper might help. Question four, and it's another viewer question from Chris W. Brown. What connects the following? Microsoft Windows in 2015, Eurovision since 2016, Red Dwarf in 2012, and unless things are about to change, the Apple iPhone. And question five, what popular drink was surprisingly not invented until 1869? What popular drink was not invented until 1869? It was created by an American doctor who was anti-alcohol and wanted to make an alternative to wine for use in Holy Communion. Hmm. Next, I've taken titles of well-known TV shows, translated them into Vietnamese and then back into English again. All you've got to do is tell me what was the original title. Question six, assignment that is out of the question. Assignment that is out of the question. What's the original TV show? Question seven. The next mistranslated TV show is 183 centimeters further down. 183 centimeters further down. Question eight. Which internationally successful show is this? Legume Esquire. Legume Esquire. Question nine. This one sounds tricky, but I think you'll get it. 
if you think about it. The mistranslation is sack of siphon aptera. Sack of siphon aptera. And question 10, defective tall structures. What was the original title? Defective tall structures. That's it for today's questions. You should be doing this every day because you need to exercise your mind as well as your body. And one out of two is not bad. Well, here I am, back with the answers. Unless, of course, you don't care about being right. No, I didn't think so. Here we go. First, we had five general knowledge questions. Question one was the one about the Beatles' longest single. It's over seven minutes long, which made it the longest chart topper when it got to number one. Uh, it managed it with all the uh, na na nas. It's Hey Jude. Question two, I asked you what uh, SpongeBob SquarePants does for a living. He's a chef, a fry cook to be precise. Question three was from Craig Aston. The 20th of February, it's a palindrome. That's right, it reads the same backwards as forwards, the 20th of February, 2020. But not only that, it's a global palindrome, which means it works if you do the numbers like they do in America, incorrectly, or if you do them properly like we do here. So it's a palindrome all over the globe. Yeah, nice, a global palindrome. It's nice to hear the word global without pandemic afterwards, isn't it? A bit of a change. For question four, Chris W. Brown asked you for a connection. Well, Windows operating system went from eight to 10. In Eurovision, you can't award nine points and Red Dwarf officially has no series nine. And whilst people have been talking about an iPhone nine recently, there isn't one of those either. So the answer is they all skipped the number nine. And question five, uh, the drink that was not created until 1869 was grape juice. Yeah, the, uh, the guy noticed that if you pasteurized the juice of grapes, it didn't turn into wine. Yeah, buzzkill. Next, I gave you those poorly translated TV show titles. Here come the originals. Question six was assignment that is out of the question. That was, of course, Mission Impossible. For question seven, we had 183 centimeters further down. That was six feet under. Question eight, Legume Esquire. Did you get that? Mr. Bean. Question nine, and I reckon you were puzzled by this one, but you've got it from SAC, am I right? SAC of Siphonaptera is the mistranslated version of Fleabag. Of course it is. Finally, question 10 was defective tall structures, which naturally enough is faulty towers. Question number one, which movie had the tagline, on the air and unaware? It makes perfect sense, on the air, and unaware. Question two. What two word French phrase that we use in English means already seen? Question three, and it's from a viewer, Chris Forrest. Thank you, Chris. He asks, what's the most common color of toothbrush in the world? Have a guess. I mean, no one knows. You wouldn't have counted them, but have a guess. Question four, and this one is from David Winnikins in Leipzig. Botox is named after botulism because, well, it kind of is botulism. And botulism was named by a doctor who, like David, lived in Germany. He named the disease after the food he thought was spreading it. What was the food? So what did the doctor that named botulism think was the food that was giving people botulism. Question five, what product is sold in a long thin shape on the east coast of America and in a short fat shape on the west? So what product is sold in a long thin shape on the east coast of America and in a short fat one on the west? Next I'm gonna show you five sets of emojis. Each represents a song by Coldplay, but which song? Question six, a straightforward one to get you going. Which Coldplay single are you looking at in emoji form? Question seven, a bunch of emojis and it's a Coldplay song or as close as you can get to a Coldplay song in emoji form. What's the song? Question eight, here's another Coldplay song. Their 10th biggest in fact, what's its name? Question nine. Think about it, you should get it. Which Coldplay song are we looking at here? And for question 10, here's one from earlier in the career, a Coldplay song. Which Coldplay song? 
Well, that's it for questions. I can't help you cope with the lockdown, but I can help you when it comes to grading your family from smartest to thickest. Well, here I am, back with the answers. To the quiz, I mean. I've no idea how to cure a pandemic. Soz. First, we had five general knowledge questions. Question one. On the air and unaware was, of course, the tagline for The Truman Show. You know, The Truman Show, the thing we're all living in right now. Question two. I asked you uh, what the French is for already seen. It's déjà vu. And then for question two, I asked you what the French is for already seen. It's déjà vu. Question three. I mean, you really had to guess. This was from Chris Forrest. He asked the most common colour of toothbrush handle in the world. It is, of course, blue. If you said anything else, you're an idiot. Question four was from David Winnikins. He wanted to know what botulism was named after. Uh, Germany was the clue. It was, of course, sausages. Yeah. It literally means sausage disease. Botulism, sausage disease, which sounds, sounds like something much worse, frankly. And question five. If you buy something in America, it will be long and thin if you buy it in New York and short and fat if you buy it in Los Angeles. The answer, butter. America has not yet standardized butter shapes. I know they've got other stuff to be thinking about right now, but this will not stand. Next, I gave you emojis representing Coldplay songs. Of course I did. I've run out of ideas. Okay, so which Coldplay song? Question six was, of course, The Scientist. I chose the lady scientist emoji because, you know, I thought you might have been expecting a man scientist. And I wanted to remind you that women can be just as scientific as men. Plus, I find that absolutely bloody smoking hot. For question seven, you saw some droplets and some falling water. Every teardrop is a waterfall? Yeah, that'll do. Question eight was the one they did with Rihanna. We're looking at royalty, uh, looking at the Chinese flag, Princess of China. Question nine was a book and a globe. What do you call a book about the world? That's right, it's the one they did for the Hunger Games, Atlas. And finally, question 10. We saw someone going at great speed and a device whose sole purpose is to emit sound. Speed of sound. First up, five general knowledge questions. Question number one. In the film Finding Nemo, what kind of fish is Nemo other than a lost fish? I mean, we get that he's lost. That's why they're trying to find him. Question two, and real animals this time. You can tell the difference between an African and an Asian elephant because one of them has ears shaped like Africa. But is the Africa ear-shaped one the African one or the Asian one? So, so what kind of elephant has Africa-shaped ears? The African elephant or the Asian elephant? Question three. Here's a great question from Patricia Hill, who says she's maddeningly bored by the lockdown, not the little tiny quiz. At least, I think that's what she means. Here's Patricia's question. How did Whoopi Goldberg get her stage name? Yeah, it's a stage name. Question four, and this one is from Gareth and Scylla in Australia. What is the maximum number of queens a chess player can have on the board? So what's the maximum number of queens you can have as a chess player? And question five. In America, they call it a zone improvement plan. What do they call it in the rest of the world? So in America, it's a zone improvement plan. What is it in the rest of the world? Might sound baffling, but think about it for a while and you'll get there. Have some faith in yourself. Next, I'm going to give you the names of some characters in a movie. They might not be the biggest roles, but you should be able to work out what the movie is from those characters. Here we go. Question six. A straightforward one, just to get you going. What film has these roles? Pub Heavy, Diane's Mother, and Renton's Nurse. Big movie from 1996. What's it called? Question seven. The characters are Mandy Cohen, Biggus Dickus, and Alarmed Crucifixion Assistant. What's the movie? Question eight. The roles are Silver Assay Worker, Mother Sunday, an Eli follower. Pretty big Oscar-y kind of movie. What's it called? Question nine. Which movie has these roles? Albert Speer, General Alfred Yodel, and Magda Goebbels. And question 10. The parts are Mr. Pricklepants, Ken, and Lots O' Hugging Bear. 
Careful now, exactly which movie am I talking about there? Well, that's all your questions for today. Now, I don't mind you cheating and looking up the answers on your phone, but as this is a pub quiz, I'd prefer if you sneaked off to the toilet to do it. I'm back with the answers. They are stay indoors, wash your hands, and just have a cuddle and try again later. Now, the answers to the quiz. First, we had five general knowledge questions. Question one was, what kind of fish is Nemo? And the answer I was expecting was clownfish. And they can also be called uh, an enemy fish. Uh, you can have a point if you put that, but really clownfish is what we were looking for. For question two, I asked you to think about elephants and the elephants with ears shaped like Africa. The African elephant is, of course, the right answer. The African elephant has ears shaped like Africa. You didn't think I was trying to triple bluff you, did you? You did. <laughs> Idiots. Question three was the one from Patricia Hill. She asked, how did Whoopi Goldberg get her stage name? Well, if you were thinking Whoopi Cushion, you were on the right lines. I think I'll let Whoopi explain in her own words. And I'm quoting here, she said, when you're performing on stage, you never really have time to go to the bathroom uh, and close the door. Uh, so you get a little gassy, you gotta let it go. So people used to say to me, you're like a Whoopi Cushion. And that is where her stage name came from. Yeah, flatulence. For question four, Gareth and Scylla in Australia asked you, what is the maximum number of queens a player can have on a chessboard? You need to remember that if a pawn gets to the other end of the board, you can promote it to any piece you like. And the queen usually makes the most sense, uh, as she's the most badass. That's my description, not Gareth and Scylla's, although they are Australian, so I don't think they'd object. So the answer is nine. You could have nine queens on the board, the, the eight pawns, and then your one queen. And question five was the one about zone improvement plan. The answer was pretty much in the question because the uh, initial letters of zone improvement plan are zip. It's a zip code, or as it's called in the rest of the world, a postcode or postcode area. Next, I gave you the names of parts and films, and you had to tell me the name of the film. Question six, Pub Heavy, Diane's Mother, and Renton's Nurse. Diane is Kelly McDonald's character, Renton is Ewan McGregor's. Uh, I haven't a clue who Pub Heavy is, but the answer is Train Spotting. For question seven, I asked you which film has the characters Biggest Dickus, Mandy Cohen, and Alarmed Crucifixion Assistant. It is, of course, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Question eight, we were looking for a film with uh, some mining going on. That was The Silver Assay Worker. Uh, the names included Eli and uh, Sunday. And so the answer was, there will be blood. For question nine, the roles were Magda Goebbels and General Alfred Yodel. So it was, of course, Downfall. Yeah, I mean, Adolf Hitler's also in it. It's good. Rain, rain, rain. There's a lot of that. Finally, question 10 was a bit more upbeat. Mr. Pricklepants, Ken, and Lotso Hugging Bear. You probably guessed it. It was a Toy Story movie. Which one? Toy Story 3. The best one. Tracy Powell kicks us off. Question number one. Uh, Tracy wants to know what breed of dog is Snoopy? He's got big ears, distinctive nose. He dreams of being a fighter pilot. What breed is he? Snoopy. Question two. This one is from Chris Pace. Well, his email says Chris Pace, but he signs off Christopher. I tell you what, we'll just call him Mr. Pace. Mr. Pace wants to know the letters of the word allergy can be rearranged to make three other words. Name them. What are the three anagrams of allergy? What is Susie Dent when you need her? Question three is from Alison N. And I'm not sure what the N stands for. Hopefully not norovirus. Here's Alison's question and we want three answers again. What are the three movies in which Gwyneth Paltrow has played a British person? What are the three films in which Gwyneth Paltrow has played a British person? Rather well, I might add. Question four, and this one is from Catherine Stubbs. Which of the following is not a town in Australia? A, Humpy Bong. B, Poo Wong. C, Titty bong or D, barum buttock. Which one of those did Catherine childishly make up? And question five, this is a corker. It's from Sebastian Grammer. The Canary Islands are not named after canaries. It's the other way round. But the Canary Islands are named after an animal. What animal are the Canary Islands named after? And it's not canaries.
Next, I'm gonna describe what happens in five pop videos. No other clues. I want the artist and the title of the song. Okay, question six. A famous one to get us going. A young woman is perving over some handsome guy in a comic book, so much so that she ends up in the comic. Who's performing? What's the song? Question seven. It's a pop video. A young woman witnesses a murder and sees a black guy wrongly arrested for it. After hiding in a church, she goes to prison to seek justice, and for some reason, a statue turns into the man. Question eight. A young woman in a red hat drives a 1978 Lincoln Continental. She picks up some passengers who look eerily familiar, and then she runs out of petrol. Question nine. A woman in fishnet stockings pays a visit to the USS Missouri and almost certainly breaches health and safety regulations with regard to one of the cannons. And question 10. A young man walks in kind of slow motion along Studland Bay in Dorset and that's it. That is the whole video. Who's performing? What is the song? Well, I do hope you've been enjoying the uh, tiny little quiz of the lockdown. To be honest, it's nice to have something to put on a suit for. Well, the top half of a suit. Business on top, party down below. Let's get on to some answers. First, we had five general knowledge questions. First one was from Tracy Powell. She asked, what kind of dog is Snoopy? He's a beagle. He's always been a beagle. How could you not know Snoopy was a beagle? What kind of a person are you? Question two, Chris Pace asked for three anagrams of allergy. They are, of course, gallery, largely, regally. If you got all three, bloody well done. Question three was from Alison N. Three movies in which Gwyneth Paltrow played someone British. Emma, Sliding Doors, Shakespeare in Love. For question four, Catherine Stubbs asked you about Australian towns with ridiculous names. Okay, let's go through them. A, Humpy Bong is real, it's in Queensland, means dead houses. Poo Wong, also real in Victoria, population 360. Titty Bong, also in Victoria, population three. And the name means, as far as I can see, peppermint tree. Huh. Brum buttock. That one's in New South Wales, and the name refers to a local landowner. So I'm afraid if you said A, B, C, or D, then Catherine has tricked you. They are all real towns in Australia. Well done, Australia. Well done, Catherine. And question five was from Sebastian Grammer. Uh, canaries are named after the Canary Islands, and the Canary Islands are named after, if the word canine came to mind, that will have helped. They're named after dogs, the Canary Islands. Yeah, dogs. Next, I gave you descriptions of pop videos. Here come the answers. Question six was a comic book one, and that, of course, was Aha, Take On Me. You all should have got that. For question seven, you had the woman going from church to prison and the hot statue. It was, of course, like a prayer, Madonna. Question eight was the red-hatted woman who then becomes her own passenger. Uh, we were looking for Alanis Morissette, and the song is, of course, ironic. For question nine, we had the breach of protocol aboard the USS Missouri. It was Cher, and it was if I could turn back time. Finally, question 10 was the one involving a man walking down a beach. It was, of course, uh, Coldplay's breakthrough hit, Yellow. Well, that's it for today. I don't understand why they haven't come up with a vaccine yet. I mean, it's not brain surgery, it's epidemiology. <laughs>